coming to you live from the Wild Wind Boat Park. The big news today is, oh my goodness, someone has turned the heating up to 17 and it's been pretty toasty all day. That is for sure. So we're back with another question and answer session where I'll be answering your questions about catamaran sailing. Um, if you would have any questions that you'd like to be answered, you could just type them in and I will get back to you live. But if you are watching this later on, uh, just so you know, it is now half past five on Friday afternoon in Greece. Uh, if you are watching this later on, I won't be able to respond to your questions live, but I will reply to you as soon as I have a look later on. As usual, I've got some preloaded questions as well, which people who can't make it have sent in. So I'm just going to start steaming through those preloaded questions right now. I haven't had any, has anybody tried anything on the live chat yet? I haven't seen anything. Oh yeah, hello Bull Thrush, great to have you with us. Great to see you. Uh, that shows that the live chat is working. All right, so I'm just gonna go for my first preloaded question. This one's from Stephen. He says, what is your view on pumping the sail? He says, it's not a catamaran thing as far as I'm aware. I say the five essentials done well will pay more than flogging the sail back and forth. Okay, so pumping on a catamaran. Stephen is quite right in that it's not a particularly effective method to use on a catamaran because the re one of the reasons why pumping isn't particularly effective, if you were going to pump like you would on a monohull, like a laser, which has just got uh, a small amount of purchase on the main sheet. If you try pumping with a six to one main sheet, the, the sail isn't gonna move in and out quickly enough to have that fanning of the wind effect that you get on a monohull. Uh, what can be helpful is in lighter winds, when you come out of attack, so go through the tack, you've eased a load of main sheet out. As you come out of the tack, bring the main sheet back in and then release it again, just an arm's length, and then bring it back in. So one sort of gradual pump out of the tack, that would be enough. If the wind was super light, so you were really struggling to go forwards at all because of a lack of wind, and you really wanted a workout, what you could actually do is disconnect your main sheet, have one person steering the boat, one person actually grabs hold of the boom and kind of pump it like you're, like, almost like you're rowing with an oar, like this, and that will fan the sail and that will get the boat going forwards quite nicely. But that is the only type of pumping that I would use. There we go, preloaded question number one, pumping. Okay, I think I saw a few people checking in there. Um, I am on the tappy telephone again, so there will be a slight tapping noise in your ears when I'm doing some scrolling back. Hello, Ollie. Ollie's been working very hard on the beach today. He's now at home, feet up, I should think, cold beer in his hand, watching a bit of Joy Rider TV. Now that is how you should be unwinding at the end of your day. Gunny Duns, hi. Important question, how are you? Yeah, not bad actually. It has been very hot and, you know, people do say, surely after living in a hot country for so many years, you get used to it. Yes, you do get used to it, but no, it doesn't make it any easier on the particularly hot days when you're having to tune rudders on Hobie 16s. Uh, it does get a little bit, it, workflow gets pretty slow at times. All right, great to see you all, by the way. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This is a, a bumper turnout. Steve-O, beach is looking good. Yeah, I think so. Steve-O FX1 there is, I've actually almost just finishing editing uh, this week's Show Us Your Cat, in which Steve-O is one of the main features 
And I tell you what, this Sunday's episode is looking like another absolute banger. So uh, make sure you catch that. All right, just scrolling back to say hello to everyone. Just going through the hellos, which is nice. Yes, yeah, Stephen says pump, pump, pump. Very good. Yeah, I should say so. See well, Lee. Hello. Great to have you with us. Hello, Robin. And hello, friends. Yeah, of course. Hello to everybody everywhere. Hello, Germans fan. Hello, Jeff at gearreport.com. Uh, don't forget to check out gearreport.com for all of your outdoor kind of camping, um, knives, guns, torches, uh, very rugged old military vehicles, gearreport.com. And you'll see Jeff's smiling face over there. Jeff is also running a Sea Cadets or Sea, sea Scouts group. And he's actually selling some Hobie 17 boat parts. Anybody need Hobie 17 boat parts? and you're in the States, let Jeff know at gearreport.com. Gunny Dunn says, hello all, hope all of your days are great. Frank, hi Frank, that's Frank in Canada with the Prindle 15 flying free. Yasu Pano, that's Pano in Patra. You see, I'm learning where everybody lives. I think this is very important. All right. Germans fan, I would like to have a shorts on how to turn the boat onto its side on land. Yeah, cool, that's a good one. I'm not sure if I've actually done a how to tip your boat over video already, but not a shorts one. But um, if anybody's keen on doing a bit of research, um, I can't actually remember if I've done it or not. Maybe just have a look, do a search within the Joyrider TV YouTube channel, see if if I've actually done that, but um, if not, I could certainly do that very easily. God, the screen has gone very dark. Don't know why that is. Why has my screen gone dark, Rick? Uh, too much carrots. Oh, too many carrots. All right, this is uh, it's becoming a challenge. To... Okay. All right, Ollie said uh, cold beer and is currently heading out fishing. Nice. All right, just bear with me a sec. I'll just see if I can bring up the brightness. All right. Okay, this is just a short intermission uh, where I'm gonna attempt to bring up the brightness on my telephone because it is so bright. Brightness is at full. Okay, all right, yeah, that's a bit better. All right. In fact, I'm going to take you indoors just to say hello um, to everybody who's checking in. We've got a live studio audience at the moment. We have got some usual suspects. Ricky Nielsen, of course. Cheers. One of the main guys on the Wild Wind Beach. We've got Keith. Happy Amstels. Keith is actually the spirit guide here <laughs> at um, Wild Wind Sailing Holidays. We've got Mike, who's just arrived. Yamas. And we've got Pip the cat. Nothing. Okay, that is a grateful cat who, uh... all right, so we're just going into the workshop where all of the magic takes place, just so that I can have a bit of a better read. Oh, in fact, this is a lot more practical. Uh, thank you for bearing with me there. Um, All right, Jay Mitt, getting into sailing now. Looking to get a 16 cat in Miami. Been doing a lot of studying, great stuff. Yeah, let us know how you get on if you're stuck finding a boat. Um, I can, of course, put out a video um, asking the global community if anybody happens to be uh, selling a 16 in the Florida area. I'm sure there's gonna be a load out there. We've got Bow Wave Pool. Afternoon, Paul. Great to see you. We've got Sky Leak. Um, I've seen some videos of competition sailing in heavier, heavier winds, autocorrect, I reckon, um, with mast really rotated into the wind. 
almost facing directly into the apparent wind. Yeah, it's a very popular, um, it's not something that I go for personally, but pretty much everybody else who is racing like an F-18, um, I, I haven't actually looked, but I bet the NACRA 17 guys are doing it. When you get to a point where you're getting overpowered on the upwind point of sail, and you've got your downhaul on full, then what people are doing is bringing their mast rotation right in. And what that is doing is flattening off the whole rig as a flat profile. So you really need, this works really well with the boats with the carbon mast, like especially on the A-Class, uh, where the mast is um, a lot more responsive to bending. And also the boats with a tapered mast, so a mast that gets thinner at the top. When you bring the mast in line with the boom in the heavy stuff, your whole rig becomes a very flat profile and it takes a lot of the power out. And then the mast is also allowed to bend off to leeward. Uh, personally, I don't subscribe to this style of mast adjustment just because whenever I do it, I really don't like the way that it feels and it doesn't seem to work so well for me. Hmm. Two shakes. Rick, could you do us a favour? You just grab my computer off that 16 and my water. Yeah. It's in the, the white bottle. Thanks, man. I'm setting up shop in here now. It's a bit easier. Thank you for bearing with me. It's important to get your affairs in order. It's just far too bright outdoors. Okay heavier yeah okay auto correct ah sebastian also he's been working hard on the beach we've got hayden hello hayden great to see you there uh starting the gel coat work on my 14 today gonna be taking some pictures thank you very much rick you're welcome oh you're an you're an absolute throw out a tv bottle here. what a guy <laughs> yeah not not actually available in the shops at the moment if anybody wants one uh let me know makes your drink taste better um, Hayden says he's starting a gel coat work on his 14 today. Going to be taking some pictures so we can see the process on Show Us Your Cat. Great stuff. That's what we want. Steve-O said, did you catch the sale GP last weekend? Oh my, it was good. Um, all right, how do I break this to the community? I didn't see it. I just saw the odd bit, the odd clip here and there, but I didn't have time to watch the whole thing. I was pretty much looking forward to it as well, but it really did look like a belter. I'll try to catch the next one. Um, Robin, hello. Robin says, I'm sure my shrouds are too loose. When I pull, when I pull then tension out of them with the jib halyard, the mast binds on the rotation stop of the mast base how much room is there usually between the mast base stop and the mast? Yeah, so if, um, so that, I wouldn't say that is because your mast is too, is because your shrouds are too loose as such. I would say that is possibly, you're putting too much mast rake on the boat. A good way of finding out if you've got too much mast rake on your boat is with the mainsail up, of course, with the jib up, with your jib tension on, then sheet the mains sheet in. And if it is really too easy to sheet it in block to block, which means if you can sheet it in very easily block to block with one hand, then your mast is quite likely going to be too far back. But um, what Robin specifically is saying is that the mast step is catching at the bottom, which yes, it would indicate that the mast may be too far back. What it also might, unfortunately, what it could mean is that the bottom of the mast is quite significantly worn, which if that gets really worn, it will sit a bit lower. So what you could do if it is quite worn is go for a double biscuit approach so put it's binding at the 
front. Hmm. Well, if your if your mast was raked back, that should actually lift the front a bit. So I would go for the double. Try a double biscuit approach. It does. I'm just going to see if I've got one. Bear with me a sec. Um, all right, just having a look. I don't know if I've got one here. Um, no, that's the wrong sort. Um, No, I've only got a tiger one here, but um, I think if the, if your mast base is is quite heavily worn, then it is going to sit down a lot more. So if when you look at the base, the bottom of your mast, if it's completely flat, that means it's quite worn because a fresh one will be quite rounded on the bottom. So if um, all right. You would usually put one of these bad boys underneath the base of the mast. Uh, this is called a mast pivot bearing. Um, so with one of those in there, that's going to raise the mast up a very small amount. So what you could do is either put something underneath there. Like, I don't know how, I don't know about American currency, but you could put a coin under there that's the right size to raise that up. Or you could go for two of these, double the thickness, that kind of thing. That is all that's springing to mind at the moment. Hope that helps in some way there, Robin. All right, scrolling back. Yeah, so what I'll have to do is next time I've got a 16 with the rig tension on, I'll, I'll have a look and see how much space there is at the bottom we can do some in-depth analysis of that all right Stephen hello trying to get the eight Hobie 16 writing bag to work any tips on balancing the bag on the shoulder yeah it's um it does take it took me a few goes to get um to get used to it but what was the key points I think the key points were to um, fill, obviously fill, fill the bag up, lift the bag out of the water until the bottom of the bag is about level with the hull, which is down. And then really get the rope into your neck as much as you can. And you kind of have to twist a little bit to get the bag to sit right behind you and then push out. And then as if by magic, your boat will come upright if um with that small bit of advice um if it's still not working for you if it is possible that you could video your um technique with this method and then i can have a look and see if i can spot any reason why it's not working so well for you but um one thing that i had to adjust quite a lot to make it work and I still I can't remember exactly what I did because it's been a while now is adjusting how much you're pulling the bag up before you go to push it out. So get everything set up before you go to pick it to pull it out. I hope that helps a little bit. Germans fan, do you know how to modify the mast foot on an older Hobie 16 so that you can go with a bit more mast rake? There is already a flipping. There's already a flipping boat vid. Haven't seen that. Thank you. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. The flipping the boat over vid. <laughs> in in um in England, if you said there's already a flipping vid, flipping is a polite way of saying another word. Um. Yeah. I've got you. But um. Yeah. If you're not if you're not able to get enough mast rake on because of your mast foot then might sound quite extreme but you could if you can if it's possible that you can compare your mast foot to a more modern one i think around 2000 was when the boats really stuck um perhaps that was when there was quite a big change to the boats
but if you can compare yours to one of those and then take a file and maybe a hacksaw and you might have to do some modifications. Unfortunately, I haven't got any older masts here. The oldest I've got is probably about 2006, which are actually the same as the current ones. So sorry, I can't help you more on that. Iasu. Ah, sounds Greek. Iasu. Hi, Joe. Thanks for all your great videos. I'm just purchasing a secondhand Hobie Tiger. Yeah. And want to use it for coastal cruising in southern Italy. Great choice. Do you think I need a raid mainsail for reefing? Thanks. I tell you what, if you if you had an option, if you're thinking of getting a mainsail made custom, then why not just get some reefing points put in? And then you will have to come up with a method of hooking it up. Either that or you'd need to fit some sort of cleat at the bottom of the mast, perhaps like what we have on the Hobie 16, a horn cleat. And then you'd want to be using a, a main halyard, which has got a Dyneema core. So a very strong, low stretch main halyard, which will allow you just to keep the mainsail in its reefed state held on the main halyard. Um, because the locking mechanism, of course, on a Tiger mainsail is very different to that of on a 16 or a Pacific or one of the boats that we use, which is designed for reefing. But yes, get your sail built with some reefing points because if you're gonna do some long distance sailing, like maybe going for a week's um, expedition, you can't guarantee that you're not gonna encounter winds stronger than you're happy with with the full sail, certainly gonna make your experience a lot more comfortable, well worth having the option. All right, scrolling back. All right, see well Lee, what's your most wanted single-handed catamaran this year? Um, for me personally, the single-handed catamaran that I most want is of course, a, I don't mind which builder, but an A-class, uh, not even necessarily a full up-to-date kind of modern can go and win the worlds on it A-class, but one with curved foils to get the feel of A-class sailing. I really want to get into some A-class sailing. I've never sailed an A-class. I think I could do well with an A-class and I would love to try, but... Um, I'm not really in a position to go out shopping for a new boat at this time. Thanks for asking. If you're thinking of getting me one, then uh, it's very kind. If I could have a blue one, that would be brilliant. All right. Carl Carlson. Is that Carl Carlson? Is that the same Carl Carlson? No, I think he spelled his name differently. But hi, anyway. Um, you plan on doing some more laser sailing? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm going to follow up my Is Laser Sailing Fun video. Here we go, spoiler alert. But I'm going to call it Laser Sailing Is Fun. See what I did there? I just changed the order of the words to make more of a statement than a question. But yes, I'm into it. I'm going to do it as soon as um, we finish with this whole setting up process that we're doing here. Then there will be plenty of sailing to be had. And I'm very very excited to get out there on everything. All right. Ilya, ah, oh, great to have you on board there. Twice now I've been unable to tack in a current, oh, in a current that's flowing in the same direction as the wind. So if the wind and the current, so if the wind and the tide are coming or the current are coming in the same direction that is effectively what is that going to do i haven't sailed in tide for a long time i'm going to be honest with you there um so your boat's being pushed back what that is going to do actually if you're going into the wind into the tide 
that is effectively going to make it feel is it going to make it feel windier but um to be honest i'm going to have to think about this as you could probably tell uh due to just jibe says steve oh nice one steve oh there with uh, the advice yeah um i think you're just going to need a more um tuned tacking technique so make sure before you go like um like with tacking in water that's not moving just make sure before you start the tack you're sailing the boat as close to the wind as you possibly can then just when you're ready to go crank the main sheet in as tight as you can as you do that nudge her up into the wind a bit but keep it sailing and then when you're ready main sheet is all the way in then push it into the wind pretty hard on the rudders and then as soon as you head to wind totally release the main sheet and then she should pop through nicely sorry i can't do better lee bow says hein yeah i need to um if i'm gonna keep doing this sort of thing maybe i should go sailing in some tide no tide in greece or none not enough that we'd worry about it anyway okay Stephen. i think the bag we're back to the capsize writing bag here i think the handles are too long in your video the bag has short handles you could try shortening your handles maybe by tying a knot in them just to make them a bit shorter maybe that will help hayden any experience with a 14 turbo if i have the shrouds on the top hole there is no room to lift the mast up um like i would like to as you call it the pile driver technique trying to step the mast solo okay mm. is your um okay hayden you can respond to this is your four stay also in the top hole if if your four stays in the top hole your shrouds are in the top hole and you still haven't got enough slack to be able to do the pile driver technique putting the mast up what you could possibly do is um put a small extension piece on your forestay when it comes to putting the mast up so um from the pin in the forestay take a small rope and then uh tie the rope you'll have to experiment for how long it needs to be it might oh it should only be like that much rope but tie a little extension piece between the end of the forestay and the chain plate where it attaches and then that should give you enough slack to be able to use that pile driver technique for getting your mast up no hole because it has three rolling furler should there be a chain plate on the furler possibly um what do you generally do do you normally just fasten the tack of the jib straight onto the furler and the um jib is holding the mast up all right we'll come back to hayden when he comes back it is quite difficult sometimes to know what's going on without having a good look at the evidence okay wind waves whatever yo joe good morning from north florida what's the way to ha huh, what's the best way to support joyrider tv i bought a, a shirt a while back and feel like i could do more because your channel rocks tons of great info yeah this is very good um thank you very much but um on the youtube channel there is a link just to paypal if you just want to effectively chuck um a bit of cash in the bucket so I, that i can um uh use it on the barbie like keith said um or um yeah so there's paypal which is linked on the joyrider youtube page patreon if you want to chip in a bit regularly that's what patreon is there for so um on patreon you can choose to chip in like maybe just one dollar a month five dollars thirty dollars the sky's the limit really and it will all go to a very good place but thanks very much for 
uh, bringing that to everybody's attention. Or you could get another T-shirt or a hoodie. Uh, you could do buy some gifts at TotalJoyRider.com. Custom designs are, of course, available. Although I haven't got so much time at the moment, I shouldn't be promoting that too much. Um, all right, hi Oscar, great to have you on board. How's it going down there? It's hot. That is the main feature. Must be heating up in Austria now as well, I should think. Wind waves, whatever says, I currently sail a Hobie Holder 14, but I'm re restoring a Hobie 16. Can't wait to get it on the water, nice. Oscar says, is there a possibility to shorten trapeze wires because the one for the crew is too long? Yes, you can. If you've got wire trapeze wires, you can shorten them, but you will need specific tools, which it's unlikely that you have. The best thing to do to shorten your wires is to go to a local um, boat chandlery um, find out where a, somebody who does yacht rigging or something, a rigging maker, because I'll show you what you need. You're gonna need someone with a tool like this. This is, this is what we use to make the, um, the fittings at the end of wire rigging. So this like crimps those on, unless you've got a tool like that it's better just to take your trapeze wires off, take them to a somebody who's got the facility for doing that. Um, they'll charge you almost nothing for that because it will take literally two minutes and off you go. Okay. All right, scrolling back. Thanks for coming, everybody, by the way. This is very nice. Um, all right, so Jeff, hi Jeff, Jeff is the French Breton from Hong Kong, ah, okay, nice, I've got, oh dear, I've got yellow stains on my hulls, I used a recommended product, stains, came back after a few weeks, am I going to have to repeat this process every month? All right, from what I've heard from the Joyrider TV community is once you've got rid of the stains, if you want to prevent the stains from coming back, you need to polish your hulls. Um, that is what I am led to believe. So that is all I've got for you on that one. All right, Oscar says, have you ever sailed a foiling boat? Yeah, here at Wildwind, we've got um, two types of foiling boat. We've got lasers that foil. Yes, it's true. You can look it up. There is some video evidence. And using the same kits, which are from Glide Free Foils, we've also got RS Aeros that foil. Great fun. And it's a really, really good way to get into foiling, especially on the laser, because the laser is quite a stable platform. Um, very simple, which takes a lot of the... Um, perhaps what do you call it, the intimidation out of foiling, especially for your first goes at it. All right, certainly a lively session today. This is nice. All right. Player one. Oh no, player one broke his NACRA 15 mast. I'm very sorry to hear that. Steve-O, when you're allowed in the water in VAS, yeah, we're kind of getting away with it at the moment, but unfortunately now it's possible to go out because we're doing the preparations. I haven't had any time at all between building boats, moving stuff, getting organized and making videos. There hasn't been much time to actually go sailing, uh, but I am hopefully gonna be able to get out at some point soon. All right. All right, just scrolling back. If you can hold fire on any further questions just at the moment, because every time a new question comes in, I lose where I am in the comments. Okay, Tim says, hi, Joe. Hi, Tim. 
Jeff's broken, feel, uh, broken foot is almost healed. So he should be back on the water pretty soon. That's Jeff at Gear Report. Oscar says he repaired his hull a few weeks ago. So hopefully it's not leaking anymore. Okay, player one says broke 15 mast. Have you ever had a mast break? Yeah, quite a few actually. Uh, one of them is actually videoed. We just happened to have a camera on the top of the mast of a tornado when we we're using an aluminium mast and the mast broke with the camera on the top. It's quite old, so the footage isn't crystal clear, but it's well worth a look. I think it's called Tornado High Speed Destruction Clickbait. Um, check that one out. Yeah, that's um, about as much fun as it sounds. All right, we've got Augustin, SMF. Any knowledge about Hobie sales design? Whew. I'd have to say that question is a little bit too broad to be um, to be addressing on this occasion. But um, we have got some knowledge on Hobie sales design. Um, like, for example, the Hobie 16 sale plan, very quick on the reaches because we've got quite a low center of gravity. The, it's a low aspect rig on a Hobie 16, very powerful jib. The jib gives us so much drive on the reaches when we're going fast, which is one of the key components of the fact that the Hobie 16, in my opinion, is faster than pretty much everything else out there in the hands of somebody who can. All right. Scrolling back. A lot of scrolling back today. Sorry about that. If you're experiencing the tappy tappy. Okay. Mathan. Another NACRA 15 sailor in France. Looking for sponsors. Do you know a company who could help um, you? Unfortunately not. Um, yeah. Um, finding a sponsor is a juicy... Um, a juicy uh, a juicy one yeah um what you need to uh think about when approaching people who you want to sponsor you is what are you offering them in return for what you want them to offer you so you need to know what events you're going to be going to what sort of um exposure those events are going to get like are they going to be or in a magazine people read magazines anymore um what websites might they go on is there going to be any videos that are posted from there are you going to make videos from the event where you could keep repeatedly plugging the sponsor is it going to be on tv is it the olympic games uh so that would be a good starting point all right Okay, scrolling back. All right, Hayden says he's got no hole because it has three roll of furler. Should there be a chain plate? Oh, we had that one. Um, okay. Yeah, so Hayden's saying his Hobie 14 mast doesn't have a four state. It's just held up with the luff of the jib. That's going to make it a little bit trickier using the pile driver technique, but it should still be possible. What you should be able to do is use, um, put a line between the furler or the bridles to the tack of the jib if you are a little bit short of rigging space to be able to lift the mast up onto the mast base. Of course, what you might also need to do is just make sure that no, the shroud adjusters aren't twisted when you're putting it up because you should have enough slack there with the shrouds loose to be able to do it so it might be that your shroud adjusters are twisted but otherwise bit of rope between the tack of the jib and the bridle wires um that should do it and then when you want to attach the jib you might have to take your main halyard 
uh, and take that forward somewhere, tie it onto something solid. Like here, uh, we've got all these tie downs in the boat park uh, just to hold your mast up while you are putting the jib on to the adjuster there. Okay. All right. Okay, we've got Jan P here. Jan P says, I'd like to add a jib to my FX1. Some guys disapproved. Oh, what? Saying a jib would slow the boat down. What would you say? That's a great question, actually, because we're just um, putting an FX1 together at the moment with a jib on it. And we're putting it together so we can use it as an FX1-2. That would be an FX1 for two people. Double trapeze. Absolute bad boy of a flying machine. Much more difficult to sail in the strong wind than the F-18s because the boat so much lighter, smaller hulls. Will it slow the boat down? I think it would only slow the boat down if you weren't using it. So if you had it rolled up, yes, it would create more windage. So it would slow you down. But if you've got it out, like in light winds, it certainly shouldn't slow the boat down. But I would say the only reason for fitting a jib to an FX1 really is if you are going to be sailing it with two people more often then with the jib on there, it does make the boat uh, of an extremely viable double hander. All right, scrolling back. Um, okay, Hayden says he sees pictures with the 14, with and without a chain plate, so he's going to have a go. All right, player one is repeatedly asking the same question. Yes, I had the question there. And yes, I've had a mask break. Okay, Stephen says, with back onto stains on the hulls, how do you get the brown rusts looking stales, stains off the sails? Um, I would say the first thing that springs to mind with getting those stains off sails, I would try um a bit of like a cream cleaner like um it was jiff then it went being called sif then it became handy andy um so um i would try a bit of that just just a small bit see how that works out scrolling back again lot of scro scrolling back today sorry about the tappy tappy all right see well lee is a cat more expensive than a Hobie 16. Yeah, I think a brand new A cat would probably come in at about 20,000, maybe a bit more, 25,000 euros. Whereas a Hobie 16, I don't even know what the retail price is of a Hobie 16 at the moment, but I would expect it to be something like 14,000 euros. Um, the reason the A cat is more expensive is because it's made. There's a lot of carbon on there, some very exotic materials, and also they're built in very small numbers, which of course puts the, the cost up. Okay, Augustine, ever tried the RS500? Now this is actually quite embarrassing. We've got three RS500s here, and I have actually never sailed one. Sorry. Yeah, I should probably um, actually do that. Yes. OK. Yeah, I'm a bit embarrassed about that, that the fact that I haven't actually tried one, but they do look nice. OK, question from player one. I broke my knack 15 mast. Have you ever broken a mast? OK. Thank you very much, player one, for your contributions here. All right, Jeff, let's polish those holes. Got machines at the club love your program big fan cheers yeah nice one player one have you ever tried a hobie rocket i'm not actually familiar with the hobie rocket um it's not a boat that i was aware that they'd made so no i haven't thanks for asking though all right germans fan tornado catamaran mast break mast head camera tornado destruction didn't 
quite get the right search results. Uh -huh. All right, I'll link that video afterwards if you haven't found it by then. Heinz says, are there any changes to the Wildwind fleet this year? Not, but there's a shortage of choice. No, no real changes to the Wildwind fleet except for one new feature, which is going to be the FX-1-2, the double-handed FX-1. Ideal crew weight for that bad boy is going to be between 120 and 140 kilograms combined. So um, you'd need to find somebody quite light to sail with, but that will go like, whew, like maybe like the Hobie rocket. Um, it's going to be very quick indeed and fun, exciting, difficult. Um, all right. Bow Wave Paul says, mask break video. Um, Timon, hi, man. How you doing? Can you show us the Wild Wind Sailing Park? Yeah, why not? I think it's time for a stroll. All right, let's go and have a look. Let's come out of here, out of the workshop. We'll see how the, the guys are going in the chill-out lounge. Yeah, the, it's looking all right. The cat has moved. Yeah, she's on the tiger. Okay, so here we go, starting off. We've had a little reshuffle of the boat park for this year, sure just to put less mileage on the flip-flops. Um, so we've got here a fleet of uh, five Hobie Tigers. There's the C2 from Good Old Design. Definitely getting out on that bad boy shortly. Um, the fleet of three FX ones. We've got a Sport, a Standard, and we're calling the FX one two the Special FX. All right. Then we've got a fleet of three Hobie Pacifics. Hobie 14 at the back there. We've got some Hobie 16s here. We've just got four here. And then we've had to put two somewhere else because of a lack of space. Um, then we've got two Hobie 15s. 15s are great as a first catamaran to try or for single handing when it's a bit windier, for learning how to helm on the trapeze. If you want to go out on your own, the Hobie 15 is a very good choice very stable not as powerful as the 16. got a 49er just here dragoon there at the back waiting for some parts then we've got of course we've got lasers plenty of them rs terrors we've got some optimists um then over there i'm not going to go all the way over there but we've got some rs zests which are very good boats for the first time sailor and then RS 2000s, 200s, 500s. We've got a 100 there. What else have we got over there? We've got some arrows over there. And we've got a 20, we've got one 29er. Oh, and then I've got some tornadoes uh, on the trailer over there waiting to be built. So still plenty to be getting on with as you can see. So there we go. That was your guided tour of what is going on down here at this time glad you enjoyed it i'm just going back into the shade so that i can see what's coming through a bit easier so it is so bright oh my goodness man all right coming back in thanks for that i i, I enjoyed the walk um all right scrolling back scrolling back all oh, right there we go have you ever sailed a hobie 20 miracle or similar yeah i sailed um we used to have some hobie 20 formulas here which um were very nice they had kind of like a similar feeling to an f18 just a, a bit heavier so they sat in the water a bit more and had a bit more uh inertia let's say because of the weight but um, yeah, nice boat and um, good fun. All right, is the Nacra 20 carbon faster than the Tornado? Yes, I would say yes. All right, Oscar has, has had a go on that. Fernando, hi, great to have you with us. Any opinion on the Hobie 15 if ever tried? Oh yeah, I just answered that actually. I used to sail on it, still have the feeling of driving on an enormous truck. No, the 15 is great for those purposes that I just outlined. Um, definitely good if you're at the earlier stages of sailing or perhaps if you want to sail with non-sailors, maybe you want to go sailing with kids, 
that kind of thing, then the 15 is very good. It's very forgiving, doesn't have a boom. It's got the skeg hulls, a lot easier to tack. Um, well, it's easier to tack with worse technique than the 16 for sure. But um, it's definitely got its place. It is a very, very good boat. One of the easiest boats to learn to sail on completely. Um, whether a cat or a monohull, Hobie 15, very easy to learn how to sail. Um, you could compare it to something like an RS or a um, Dart 16 or something. But the 15 is made of fiberglass, which means it's stiffer and lighter than those boats made of plastic. Jan P, thanks for the FX1 assembly video. Very helpful. I bought, oh wow, you bought a FX1 in parts. Fantastic, great stuff. All right, Seawell Lee says, do you know the Hobie iCat? I, yeah, didn't really hear much about it. I saw some pictures maybe about I don't know, 10 years ago, and then I didn't hear anything else about it. The iCat was going to be like the Hobie version of an A-Class. Very exciting, possibly. Germans fan, the FX12 is going to be quite hard to handle, I would think. Yeah, definitely. I've sailed one before, and the acceleration is very rapid, and the lower volume hulls, that is going to make the boat harder to sail all right Zach hello Zach I'm sure it's been asked before but what's your opinion on trimarans like the Corsair marine tries yeah I haven't done much in fact I haven't done any small trimaran sailing the extent of my trimaran sailing has been on a 20 foot 28 foot dragonfly which is like more like a small yacht than the small kind of like uh, trimarans which compare to the boats that we're talking about here. On the Dragonfly, I thought it was absolutely excellent. Very quick for a boat of that size. Massive. You definitely feel like you are sailing something very, very wide. And when you got the windward hull up in the air and got it arcing over a little bit felt great um so i would say best thing is to find somewhere or someone that's got one where you can try one all right brett hello brett if your only option is mooring no beach available what considerations should you look at to prevent damage to the boat yeah, that's a tough one, actually, because to have your boat sat in the water all the time, it's, you know, a boat like a, one of these catamarans is not built to sit in the water all the time. So the best consideration is only keep your boat on the mooring for the periods when you're definitely going to be using it. So if you like, maybe for the month of June, you you think, all right, I'll be getting out on the boat once a week, twice a week, then maybe for that month, leave it on the mooring. Otherwise, trying to limit the amount of time it is on a mooring. Um, but things that you could do if you had to leave it on the mooring would be um, definitely make sure you can leave the rudders up. And with the rudders up, then uh, find some way of tying them so that they will stay up and stay locked in position like so they won't swing from side to side which will cause them to wear if it's a hobie 16 leaving it on a mooring with no rig tension on for a long time uh, the mu if it's windy or wavy the mast might flog around a bit which could cause um, that kind of snapping snapping when it's flogging around could actually cause uh, degradation to the rigging which could be problematic hmm. yeah um but try and try not to leave the sails on the boat if you can keep the sails out of the sun as much as you can if you can put a cover over the trampoline 
that's going to help. Um, you could, of course, put some anti-fouling or whatever they use on yachts these days um, on the hulls where the boat's going to be sitting to stop the green stuff from growing on the hulls, that kind of thing. Yeah, Brett, I think that is the short answer. Yeah, I wouldn't fancy it personally. Hines says he needs to find a 35 kilogram crew to try the FX12. Yeah, or sail it solo, of course. Jose, how you doing? Where can I buy the camera support for the Hobie 16? Yeah, the camera support that I use, I kind of made myself. Um, so I've made several GoPro mounting videos. I will link those later on unless somebody is browsing right now. 